At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a per peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink whatever is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your own town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 ret returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but be rejoice because your names will be written in heaven. Hello and welcome to Close Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father By, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. I am sending you out like lambs among the wolves. Very interesting. The harvest is rich. The laborers are few. I, this past month, I've been a priest 43 years. Let me tell you something. I'm living in a world that I was not trained for. I am exercising a priesthood that I had no idea. Many, many years ago, I was in the seminary and studying moral theology in graduate school. And I was having a real difficult time understanding when it came to contraception why the church made such a big distinction between artificial and natural contraception i was saying that I, you know uh, i really didn't understand it and a young priest a guy had been to school with my brother called him up and he's a pretty bright guy I said, you know, what, a, what about this? You know, and he said, look, you know, the, the three conditions for marriage, come here freely without reservation. We love and honor each other as long as you both shall live. We accept children. He said, if you destroy the ability to bring children into the world, then love and honor e each other and come here freely. He said, then, how come two men can't get married or two women can't get married? This is back in like 1975, right? I said, man, what are you smoking? Who ever heard of that? I mean, you know, what, what are you talking about? And I say this because a lot of people don't understand why we do what we do. And in that context, 
of married life and married love. It's for the mutual love and satisfaction of husband and wife and the procreation and education of children. Why is that simultaneously so very important? Because it defines what our Lord intends marriage. Go there forth, you know, uh, procreate and bring into the world. And so all these different things. I mean, when I, when I got ordained, making the statement, and for this reason, God made them male and female. That was not a controversial statement. It really wasn't. It was an accepted fact. And to be able to, you know, have a little Lebanese boy being raised in the South, if anybody is interested, I've got a white privilege card that ain't never been used. I can sell it as brand new. And all these things that we deal with today, and there's no context. There's no context. When we separate reason from feelings, and feelings become supreme, if we want to make feelings supreme, then I'll tell you what, we can justify anything we want, including murdering the person that I caught sleeping with my wife or whatever the case may be, or killing the person that molested my child. I can justify that. You let someone touch my child, I'll kill them. If feelings are separated from reason, and from God, anything goes. And we're really in that point. When a young couple comes to me and they're living together and they don't go to church, but they want to get married in church, and I ask them why, and I say, well, in order to be married in the church, you know, it means you're a member. If you're a member, it means you practice. And if you practice, it means you follow the rules. And to have a millennial say, who in the hell are you to tell me how to live my life? Excuse me? Excuse me? That challenge. I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. And listen, for those of you who haven't heard it, Homeland Security has issued a warning about the possibility of, of increased violence upon Catholic institutions this summer. This group called Jane's Revenge. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Ruth's Revenge. Ruth's Revenge. I'm pinning that on a poor former Justice uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who I don't think would have acted this way. But anyway, with that being said, most people don't know that there have been over 200 acts of violence on the Catholic Church since the beginning of the pandemic. And now they're very, very specific. And I'm, I'm giving this, uh, I'm filming this talk before the Hobbs case and the Mississippi Hobbs case has been released. But they're expecting that because there are six Catholic justices that there will be violence upon the justices' homes and Catholic institutions, blaming the Catholic Church for protecting unborn life. Well, I got news for you. That's a, that's a badge of honor I will wear any day to be the one who protects human life. Incurring the violence is not something I want. It's not something I hope happens. But with that being said, you know, to be the ones who are seen as responsible for protecting the unborn, sign me up. Sign me up today for that. I am sending you like a lamb among wolves. But 
the workers are few. You know what? You want to serve the Lord with your life? You want to be a priest, a nun, a deacon, brother? You want to do any of those things? I got news for you, sweetheart. No one's going to pamper you. And if you grew up in a time where everyone got a trophy and everybody got a gold star and your parents are used to going, yay, you're not going to make it. Because I don't care what you say or what you do, someone in the parish is going to be upset. It's a life we live. We got to remain faithful to the gospel. We got to remain faithful to Christ's teachings. And nowadays, remaining faithful to the teachings of Christ can be very upsetting. And this very office where I, I, I filmed my, my program, I got a call from New York saying, never in my born days did I ever think I would hear a Catholic priest publicly say, you can't marry whoever you want. Excuse me. I'm just following the boss. I'm just reading the book. I'm just sticking to the script. And that challenge, and it's out there. And it's out there. And if you're willing to stand for the truth, if you're willing to stand for Christ, we need you, we want you, we welcome you. If you want to be pampered and have somebody take care of you and cheer for you, go somewhere else. This is not the place to be. And that's the challenge to our young people today, to be heroic, to stand for something, to not be like everybody else. Years ago, my, my producer David and I went to film the, the uh, Hawthorne Dominican Sisters in Nashville, Tennessee. And she was on a retreat and one girl came in with purple hair and said, isn't this radical? And she stood up with her long habit and orthopedic shoes said, this is radical. This, everybody's got purple. This is radical. Standing up and witnessing to Christ as a religious sister, as beautiful as they were. That challenge, it's out there. The workers are very few. And guess what? If you don't know what that priest in your parish is from, where he's from, and you can't understand a word he says, and how come they can't give us a good priest? What about your son? What about your daughter? What about your family? How many of you parents pray that the Lord's going to call one of my sons or daughters to be a priest or a nun and give them the grace and the strength to endure everything that that's going to be part of? And even if in that sacrifice, there may be a real price to pay in the future in this country. I don't know if any of you remember what Cardinal George said, the Cardinal Archbishop of Chicago, but he said, you know, I'll die in my bed. My successor will die in jail. His successor will die in the public square, and his successor will start to rebuild the church, signifying the type of challenge that's in store for the priesthood and religious life today. We need men and women. We need people who are willing to stand up to the wolves with the grace of God. Stay with us, we'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Close to Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need and also your financial support. We are donor driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not gonna bring you the truth of the gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey's over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. The 72 returned rejoicing saying, 
Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan falling like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because of the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hello and welcome back to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and thank you for coming back. The You tread upon serpents and scorpions. Now, I've seen those churches that are the snake handlers, and they're poisonous snakes, and they handle the snakes during a prayer meeting. I'm, I'm not going there. You know, a grass snake scares me if, if it sees me before I see it. Maybe it's a great act of faith, but it's not one I feel like I have to prove. Okay? So, you're not going to see me on air with a, a rattlesnake and, you know, playing hide and go seek. But, He's making a point. He sees Satan falling from the sky like lightning. How many people think the devil is alive today? Oh, I do, I do, I do. Really. I told you I've been a priest 43 years. You know, in the last... 10 years, I've used the term evil more than in the first 33 years of my priesthood. When I use the term evil, I don't, I don't use that lightly. You know, uh, when, I, when I use the term evil, I associate that with demonic. Yeah, they might be screwed up. They might be a little crazy. They might, might be a little off target. I, I, I don't consider that evil. What I consider evil is something that I believe has some underpinning to some evil forces in the world. And I think it's real. And you know, I don't care. I'm going to call it out. When we have a president and the Speaker of the House who talk about carrying their rosary and telling people that it is their, exactly their Catholic faith that has inspired them to help people keep gaining access to abortions because their Catholic faith tells them to respect everyone, I'm sorry. That's evil. That's evil. And, you know, if you don't like it, turn off the television. That's all I can tell you. But when we have someone saying, I respect it, your right to kill an unborn baby. What if they said, I respect your right to molest a three-year-old? Oh, my gosh. That's terrible. They're perverts. Well, at least the perverts aren't killing them at three years old. We're killing them before they get a chance to be three years old. It's evil. It's really evil in the world. It's evil when we take preschool children and tell them that their gender is a choice. There have always been people who are overly masculine or overly feminine and whatever the case may be, given their gender. Yeah, some of them are tomboys and all that stuff. But to take a child 
who's still at the stage of saying, I got to go TT. I got to go TT. And as far as they know, that's what they do. They go TT. And you want to talk to, to them about gender ideology? That's evil. Because when we take a child and we say, you can choose whether you want to be male or female, we are in essence saying, God made a mistake when he made you this way. And God should not have made you this way so you can correct God's mistake and you can change it. Anybody want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with God and tell him face-to-face -face he made a mistake? Not me, pale face. I ain't going there. That's not going to happen. And so we start to look at a lot of the things that are going on. And, you know, every diocese usually has some person trained in exorcism. Every baptismal service that we perform has the prayer of deliverance and the rite of exorcism within it that will be guarded and guided from the evil one. I started this in my parish back in 2006 when, in my mind, I saw us starting to take a nosedive. But I wrote a prayer for the nation accompanied by the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. If you want to go to the website and order it, we can mail it to you. We'll put it on the website where you can download it and have it. But when I tell you our Lord says, that he gave them the power to see Satan falling from the sky like lightning rather than send around emails that are really funny and I get them and they make a lot of sense to me but rather than sending around all these emails and complaining I'm going to ask you on a daily basis to start praying for this country. Please pray for this country. Oh but you know the midterms, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do the other thing. In 24, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do the other thing. I'm here to tell you, there is no candidate, no party, no individual that's going to heal this country. We need healing. We need to remove the evil one. The prayer to St. Michael is that great intercessory prayer that gives us the protection of St. Michael and guards us from the evil one. And our prayer for our nation from without and within needs to be said and needs to be said regularly. Please, if you love our society, you love our country, I'm going to ask you to go online. You, you can see our website on, on the bottom of the screen or before or after. I don't do production. I'm just a big mouth, okay? But go to our website every day. Say that prayer to guard us from the evil one. There is evil in our society. What's happening when our young people, I mean... All this carjacking and gun violence and mass murders and everything like that. Well, you know, what's well, the gun's fault? I got news for you. If I get caught drunk driving, it ain't the alcohol's fault. Stupid. We need to understand that. We need, now, I'm, I'm not defending guns and AR or whatever. I don't know anything about guns. And someone's got 144 rounds, I agree. And but we got a problem. We got some disenfranchised people. We got some very angry people. We've got a very violent society. You go out in a crowd, you look at someone wrong, 
and they think the only answer is to shoot you because you dissed them by looking at them wrong, okay? Something's really wrong in our society today. And I know that we have many, many children born out of wedlock, born into fatherless homes. I know we have many, many young girls unwed and pregnant. And I appreciate the fact that you didn't abort those children and you had the children, but we need more than what we have. And we need to work to start with this next generation. We need to teach them that, you know, unbridled emotion, that's not the answer. Everything you feel, if you act on everything you feel, where do we get that from? Why are our jails so crowded? Because people are doing crazy stuff. And then we got problems with people who are woke and deciding that if I walk up to you in New York City, put a gun to your head, take your car, take your wallet, take your clothes, take whatever I want, that's a misdemeanor? Really? Well, I got to pull the trigger for it to be a felony. But other than that, it's a misdemeanor. Please, somebody explain that to me, that that's not the work of the evil one, taking over the minds and the hearts of our young people and letting them think they can act without, with impunity, without any punishment. Please tell me there's something wrong with that. Our Lord gives a 72 the disciple to overcome the evil ones. If we join our prayers for this country, interceding with St. Michael, if we join our prayers together, we can heal our nation. If we don't join our prayers together, we can keep getting more of what we've been getting. And I'm just really tired of being politically correct. I'm just really tired of worrying about whether or not I say he or she and who's gonna be offended and who's gonna want me off the air because I said the wrong thing. Get over it, get a life, go back to God, pray for our country, that's what we need. Thanks for being with us. May each day bring you close in your walk with the Lord. God bless you. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Join us here in this station each week as we strive to bring you the gospel message with great clarity and great charity. And may God bless you in your walk each day.